RG3 burst onto the scene in 2012 as the number two overall pick and instantly took the NFL by storm. He won Offensive Rookie of the Year and led Washington to a surprise playoff berth. After this, however, things quickly fell apart. He would tear his ACL in that playoff loss to the Seahawks, never again playing at the same level as his magical rookie season. He would eventually get benched for Kirk Cousins before signing with the Browns for a year and then the Ravens, settling in as a backup to Lamar Jackson and retiring to join ESPN as an analyst. But what if things were different? It's not fair to place all the blame on RG3, as Washington was, and still is, one of the worst run organizations in the league. In this series, we take control of Washington, starting in the 2013 offseason to try and rebuild the career of Robert Griffin III. Heading into the offseason, we have needs at several key positions. We don't have a lot of cap space, so we can't fill every need, but after making some cuts, we are able to bring in cornerback Aqib Tlaib on a one-year deal to help bolster our secondary. This and every other contract we'll sign throughout the series are going to be the exact same as what these players signed in real life to keep things as realistic as possible. So for Aqib Tlaib, he is coming in on a one-year, $5 million deal. The only other signing that we can afford to make this offseason is on safety Glover Quinn, a solid player who fills an immediate need for us and is here long term on a 5 year $24 million deal. Now on to the draft. To keep things fair, I'm only allowing myself to change the first two picks in any given draft, meaning you won't see me cherry picking and getting late round steals like Stefan Diggs and George Kittle every year. Our first pick in the 2013 draft comes at number 51 overall and we use it to take tight end Travis Kelsey out of Cincinnati. Our next pick comes in the third round at number 85 overall, and we use it to select tackle David Bakhtiari out of Colorado. During the preseason, we're actually able to create just enough cap space to bring in 36-year-old Randy Moss on a one-year deal, $2.5 million. He's an 86 overall still, and we might as well have some fun with this, so Randy Moss, welcome aboard. Heading into week 1, let's go ahead and take a look at our roster. Madden 25 doesn't give you that nice lineup view that future Maddens do, so we're just going to do a quick scroll through here and take a look at some of our higher overall players. Brian Arakpo is a 96 overall, 27 years old, absolute stud. London Fletcher is still kicking at 38 years old. RG3 is a 90 overall, so hopefully we can continue to ascend there. Fred Davis is still doing it, 88 overall. I did put him on the trade block, but no offers came in surprisingly. We may actually try and insert Travis Kelsey into the starting lineup. I may still try to move him. I don't know right this second. We've got to keep Tlaib on a one-year deal, 88 overall. Ryan Kerrigan is still just 25 at this point. Alfred Morris, who remembers him putting up 1,500 yards in his rookie year, he's still there. Trent Williams is only 25 years old at this point, stud left tackle, still doing it to this day at an extremely high level. You've got Randy Moss as our number one receiver technically, right alongside Pierre Garçon. Then you've got Adam Carricker at defensive end, we are running a 3-4 here, so I believe he fits that. Josh Wilson at corner, Stephen Bowen at right end, Will Montgomery, Nick Barnett, another Moss, Santana, so we've got two old Mosses on our team, Santana and Randy. Daryl Young is a great fullback, and now we're down to the punter. So I mean, you look at this team, and I mean, I don't know if the overalls are inflated, I feel like the overalls are a little bit higher in this Madden than others. Oh, by the way, there's De Glover Quinn, our safety edition. But, I mean, we've got a pretty solid team. You've got the ageless D'Angelo Hall, still just 29, hard to believe that. It felt like he was in the league for forever before DeAndre Hopkins essentially ended him. Here's our rookie Travis Kelsey. There's Kai Forbath still young. I believe he's still in the league. Correct me if I'm wrong. But yeah, I mean, I'm I'm pretty happy with this roster. They went 3 and 13 in real life, which was a disaster. I definitely don't think that with the talent on this team we're destined for that. I don't know if we're a playoff team per se, but let's just go ahead and sim. We're going to go ahead straight to the playoffs and find out. Okay, so playoffs are here, and we went 12-4, and four, winning the NFC East with the number two offense in the NFL. 21st defense, so not ideal, but man, the number two offense. Let's go. 
And looking at the schedule here, had it not been for our defense, I easily believe we could have been 14-2. We lose a week two game at the Packers, 41-30. Your offense puts up 30 points, you should not be losing. Same thing week six, Sunday night football against the Cowboys, 40-31, to almost an identical score. Then you have week 10, the offense was definitely a letdown, the defense was dreadful, 38-13, to no excuse there. And then against the 49ers, 34-17, to the 49ers just have such an insane defense at this period of time that I'm willing to excuse that. 12-4, and this is so far beyond what I would have expected, I was hoping for you know, eight and eight. Honestly, I would have been, I would have been happy with eight and eight. But man, twelve and four and an NFC East title, we will take that any day of the week. So looking at the individual stats here, RG three. This is not exactly what I was expecting out of the number two offense. I'm guessing the running game carried us, but here nor there. Thirty six hundred yards passing, twenty three touchdowns, fourteen picks passer rating of 87.2 okay now rushing the ball however we were a problem alfred morris 1700 yards 5.2 per carry 12 touchdowns evan royster rushing in 13 touchdowns and rg3 i mean madden sims just do not account for rushing quarterbacks very well at least not this far back so 266 yards on the ground one touchdown we just have to assume the threat of him rushing is what opened up these other two guys to combine for 25 touchdowns and almost 2300 yards rushing absolutely insane production from the run game and receiving santana moss actually led the way over a thousand yards only one touchdown though pierre garcon also topped a thousand yards a bit surprising that we had two thousand yard receivers but we'll take it leonard hankerson had 10 touchdowns and then unfortunately travis kelsey quiet rookie season that's okay it takes tight ends a while only 51 yards his rookie year no touchdowns and then i don't know how this happened i guess i had to slide him into the starting lineup but randy moss was just here for fun essentially the man did not have a single catch he was just enjoying himself on the sideline so i mean that's fine we'll pay him two and a half million to be a cheerleader it clearly worked out for us and then as far as sacks go, you've got Ryan Kerrigan and Brian Arakpo. 11 sacks each, we'll take that. We got nothing outside of them, which is probably why our defense ranked as low as it did. But yeah, these two did their job. We are just going to have to really build around them here in this upcoming offseason. And then as far as interceptions go, several players were three apiece. Ryan Kerrigan had three, so he was just really the heart and soul of this defense. 11 sacks, three picks, love to see that. Nick Barnett had three. Glover Quinn, our offseason addition, had three to go along with 111 tackles, so already loving what we're getting out of him. Josh Wilson had two. Brian Arakpo, Perry Riley, Reed Dowdy. D'Angelo Hall, and then there's a keep to leave on his one-year deal. He can go ahead and head over to Denver this offseason, which is what he does in real life. We're not going to be bringing him back, but thanks for the pick. Okay, and just looking at the stats around the league, a couple interesting things I want to point out. Anthony Spencer, who would have thought, leading the league with 19 sacks. Fun fact, he's from Fort Wayne, Indiana. I'm from Fort Wayne, Indiana. Not, not that anyone cares, but there you have it. And then offensively, Peyton Manning's over 5,000 yards. Honestly, no surprise there. Adrian Peterson is over 2,000 rushing yards for the second year in a row. Remember, he had that insane 2012 MVP season. Here he is again, possibly taking another MVP award from Peyton Manning. Remember, Manning had that insane 2013 season in real life, shattering all those records and winning MVP. And then Wels excuse me, Wes Welker, who I believe is a Bronco at this time, is almost at 2,000 receiving yards. Insane, man. And I was curious because I knew it was close. Wes Welker, that is actually good for the second most receiving yards in a season ever. Falling just short to Calvin Johnson's 1964 that he just set in 2012. Wow. Okay, now that that's all out of the way, let's take a look at our playoff matchup here. So we get Matt Stafford and the 9-7 and Detroit Lions. They're coming in with a team very similar to us, almost like a light version of us. 
number 5 offense, number 26 defense. Should be a good matchup. I am anticipating a win, but it's Madden, so you never know. This would be huge for the Lions. I looked it up. Their last playoff win, January 5th, 1992. So, I mean, they're motivated. They're coming in here. Let's see who wins. And we got the win, 35-24. This is the first playoff win of RG3's young career. Let's go. Really interesting numbers. They actually topped us in total yards gained, 468 yards of offense to our 413. But we put up 227 yards rushing on the ground, only 186 yards passing. Stafford had a huge day, so I mean, that's realistic. You know, Stafford does everything he can. Lions still come up short, what's new? From a passing standpoint, of course, you know, you can see Stafford there just airing it out. He did have the two picks and RG3, awful day passing. I honestly can't believe we put up the points we did with that kind of performance. That's not going to cut it moving forward. That's rough. Rushing though, there might be something to this Alfred Morris guy. Man has 8.6 yards per rush, 164 yards on the ground, and the touchdown to go with it. Crazy. Receiving Nate Burleson, who I believe now is an analyst for Fox or NFL Network, puts up 149 yards. That is crazy through the air. And aside from that, Calvin Johnson's over 100 yards. Santana Moss, 5 catches, 121 yards. Reggie Bush is still with the Lions at this point. Mike Thomas, Pierre Garçon, and that's really about all there is to speak of for receiving. Defensively, we had no problem getting to Stafford, Rob Jackson, Brian Arakpo, and Perry Riley all getting sacks while Nick Fairley brought down RG3 once. Interceptions, Ryan Kerrigan, so mad about not getting in there for a sack, he says, you know what, I'm going to pick off Stafford twice, and he goes ahead and does that. Meanwhile, Amari Spivey, who I'm going to be completely honest with you, I've never heard of, is the sole player to get a pick off of RG3. So all in all, this season has been a massive success, all things considered. Here is where I'm fully anticipating the end of the line. You get Jim Harbaugh's 49ers, Colin Kaepernick, 13-3, 21st offense but number one defense, just completely stacked at this point in time. The 49ers, I mean, just crazy, crazy defense. You've got Navarro Bowman, Patrick Willis, Justin Smith, just off the top of my head. They might have even had, you know, Antoine Bethea at this time, and I'm sure that I'm forgetting others, but man, these 49ers defenses were not to be played with, but we're going to play with them. Let's sim and see what happens. And unfortunately, as I predicted, this is the end of the line. 21-16, very close loss, so... You know, there's no moral victories in the NFL, especially not when January comes around, but to go into San Francisco and be, not beat, but come very close to such an elite team, 21-16, let's see how things went. So we actually outgained them in yardage, passing RG3, I mean, he, he did it for us. He didn't get much out of the rushing game. Colin Kaepernick had three passing touchdowns, just really went off on us. RG3, eh still that passer rating man just not pretty we're gonna have to get him some weapons a better o-line something because i know he can do better than that frank gore putting up 138 yards on the ground that is what did it he did fumble twice though and then alfred morris i mean just going up against that defensive front there's not a whole lot he could have done unfortunately nothing really to speak of in the receiving game although michael crabtree did have two touchdowns on us so um, he got lucky. I mean, this was the 2013 season, so real life, this was not a good game for him. That was that matchup against the Seahawks. This is the game that most people remember him for, unfortunately, is Richard Sherman going off about him, and rightfully so from what I've heard. But here nor there, Michael Crabtree rewriting the history books, being a hero for the 49ers. Mario Manningham is out here, completely forgot he existed. He had that crazy catch in the Super Bowl for the Giants. And then defensively, what was going on here? Sacks. Wow, I am a bit surprised. Alden Smith, remember him. I, th I believe he's still trying to make a comeback. I don't know. More power to him if so. But Alden Smith got the one and only sack of the game. There's Patrick Willis. 
interceptions. Navarro Bowman picked us off, so we couldn't bring Kaepernick down. We couldn't pick him off. As far as forced fumbles go, uh, there should be a few forced fumbles, actually. Let's just take a look here. Corey Lemonier, he was never really anything. Nick Barnett forced one. So did Ryan Kerrigan and Paris Harrelson, if I pronounced that correctly. Okay, so the New Orleans Saints are Super Bowl champions. They beat the Texans 43-37 to in a shootout. What a game that would have been. They put up 638 yards of offense. Are you kidding me? 520 passing yards? If that's not a record, that's got to be close to it. Breeze, 520 yards, 5 touchdowns, 1 pick. I mean, that is... I, I don't know if I can think of a performance better than that, especially not in the Super Bowl. That's crazy. Matt Schaub, I mean, he did what he could, but just what are you going to do against that? Nothing. Rushing, Arian Foster, 232 yards. Are you serious? Two touchdowns. Wow. Receiving, who is going off here? Marcus Colston had two touchdowns, almost 100 yards. Lance Moore, almost 100 yards. Steve Breeston, 157 yards and three touchdowns? It's insane. Wow. You've got your young Jimmy Graham in there too, just doing his thing. But seriously, man, crazy. Ed Reed is in here with 14 tackles at the ripe young age of 50. Oh my gosh. Sacks, Antonio Smith had one. Interceptions, Kareem Jackson got... I guess what you could consider revenge for Breeze just destroying them. Crazy. Alright, so free agencies here, heading into the offseason. There is really only one guy that I think I'm going to bring back, and that is Perry Riley. He's still just 26 years old. Real life, he signed a three-year, $13 million contract, so that's what we're going to get him back on. We'll take that. Fred Davis, I mean, yeah, he's 88 overall, but we really want to get Travis Kelsey in there. I would have loved to have gotten some draft capital for him, but unfortunately no one was interested. Josh Wilson sucks. He doesn't deserve this 86 overall rating. He's not good. Kai Forbath, I can either get him back in free agency or we'll get someone else. I don't really care. D'Angelo Hall is, I mean, ancient at this point. I know he's just 30, but... I mean, just knowing what we know about him in the near future, we, we don't want him back. Dowdy, no thanks. Nick Barnett, eh. And then everyone else, I mean, it's just, there's, there's no one to speak of here. So we're going to have some holes to fill, but the good news is we're going to enter the offseason with almost $40 million in cap space, much more than we had last year. So we should be much more active this time around, and we're going to transition over to Madden, 15, where we'll enter the 2014 offseason. And before we move over to Madden 15, let's just take a quick look at our 2014 draft picks. So we will be picking 60th overall and 92nd overall. Okay, so 2014 is here. We are in the offseason. We've got about 40 million in cap space to work with, much more than last offseason. Let's go ahead and take a look to see what we did with all that money. Okay, so starting with free agency, Golden Tate hits the open market. We get him five years, 31 million. 26 years old, 79 overall, we will take that. And now one of the biggest signings of free agency, Alex Mack is available. He fills an immediate position of need for us. Five years, 42 million, that is a bargain for a 95 overall center who is still pretty young at 28 years old. We're not done yet though, let's head over to the defensive side of the ball where we bring in Brandon Graham, defensive end, just 4 years, 26 million, honestly that seems like a bargain, I know he's not a perfect scheme fit, but honestly, once we get rid of Arakpo and Kerrigan, I know they're starting to get up there, maybe not Kerrigan so much, I would like to switch over to a 4-3, I've always preferred a 4-3 and Brandon Graham would be a great piece for that, still just 26 years old, gotta have him. Now this one, admittedly, I am not super thrilled about. As a Colts fan, he was okay, definitely not great for us by any means, but we're getting Dequell Jackson here. Four years, 20 million, we've got the money, we need a player inside, so sure, why not? Okay, and finally, let's get to the secondary. We've got two signings here. The first one is Sam Shields. We're getting him long term, four years, $40 million. That is our largest, you know, cap hit per season player that we're getting this year, but honestly, 
worth it. He gives us a number one corner for the next four years, 26 years old. I, I really like this offseason because for the most part, we are getting guys, you know, that are younger, you know, mid-20s who are going to be long-term contributors for us. And of course, as I say that, I have to show you our very last signing. We get Antonio Cromartie, one year, $3 million. We're super thin on corner. He's basically our new D'Angelo Hall without getting absolutely embarrassed by D-Hop, hopefully. Okay, and now it's time for the draft. So remember, our first pick is number 60 overall. We still don't have any first rounders because of the RG3 trade. I believe next year is when we'll start picking in the first again. So instead of Trent Murphy, we are taking Allen Robinson here. Another receiver, Pierre Garçon, is getting up there in age, so him and Golden Tate should be a great duo for years to come. And next up in the third round at number 92 overall, we take left guard Trey Turner. He should start immediately for us, even though he's just a 71 overall. Fills an immediate position of need, 21 years old, love this pick. Okay, so regular season is here. It's worth noting I made one more signing. We brought in cornerback Brandon Flowers on a one-year deal for around $2 million. Just to round out our secondary, our spot at number three corner was just so weak. We had to do something there. So he is our last signing. And again, just to give you a broad overview of the team heading into week one, we really have a solid roster. I mean, you've got, what, five, six players above 90 overall with Trent Williams, RG3, Alex Mack, Alfred Morris, Brian Arakpo. So, I mean, key players on both sides of the ball. You've got some real leaders here. Trent Williams is a beast. And then you've got RG3s up to a 96 overall. So, I mean, those are two cornerstone pieces right there. Your quarterback and your left tackle. You've got the best center in the league. You've got, honestly, what looks like one of the best running backs in the league after he put up 1,700 yards last year. Brian Arakpo is still doing it. Sadly, one year left on his deal. Don't know if we'll get him back, but we'll see. And then you get down to even the high 80s. Ryan Kerrigan, Daryl Young, Pierre Garçon, Antonio Cromartie, Sam Shield, Brandon Flowers, Barry Cofield, Glover Quinn is here, remember, Stephen Bowen, Dequel Jackson, Golden Tate. And we've got younger guys as well. You go over to tight end, Travis Kelsey. We are going to move him to a starter. He's better than Niles Paul. Forget what the ratings say. This is Kelsey's year. He's going to break out. Believe it. Wide receiver, you've got Allen Robinson. We are going to move him up. He needs to be starting. He's going to be starting at least as our number three receiver. Forget Leonard Hakerson. Anyways, I like this team a lot. I don't know if we're 12 and 4 good again, but we will see. Let's go ahead and sim and find out. Okay, so we are at the playoffs. We did make it, and very similar results to last year as far as record goes 11 4 and 1, almost identical. Just that tie was the difference. Number nine offense and the number one defense, which is crazy because if I remember correctly, I mean, we were in the 20s as far as defense goes. So number one defense. We did not win the division though because the Eagles went 14 and two, which is crazy because I don't remember them having a great 2014. I believe that was the year DeMarco Murray went off and the Cowboys were NFC East champs. So. The Eagles, I don't know if this was still during the Chip Kelly era, but they crushed it. So when you look at the stats, again, not a great year passing from RG3. 3,700 yards, 28 touchdowns to 20 picks. I do not like to see that. I don't know what's going on. We're still winning games, but RG3 is just not getting it done as a passer so far. Two years in. Rushing, though, you've got Alfred Morris putting up 1,400 yards, 8 touchdowns, Roy Halugas 9 of his own, RG3 rushes in 5, which I believe is a pretty good step up from last year, but still not loving what I'm seeing out of him. He's kind of getting carried, if I'm being honest. And then receiving Pierre Garçon tops 1,000 yards, not sure how much he's got left in the tank, he's getting up there. Golden Tate, our first year addition, is a 1,000 yard receiver. Allen Robinson, the rookie, puts up 600 yards and 7 touchdowns. Travis Kelsey getting his first real playing action, puts up 330 and 4. So, you know, not world beating by any means, but love to see the growth there. And then defensively, let's take a look and see how we do as far as sacks go. Leading the team with sacks, Ryan Kerrigan with 14, Brian Arakbo had 12, and then similar to last year, not a whole lot outside of that, but hey, number one defense, can't complain. Interceptions, Dequell Jackson had eight, are you kidding me? Oh my gosh, that is, 
that's insane. I mean, what a what a signing for us there. Who would have thought Dequell Jackson getting eight interceptions? Sam Shields had six. Antonio Cromarty had five. Grover Quinn had three. So this secondary was just locked down. And then just looking at the stats around the league here, offensively, nothing too crazy. Breeze did lead the league in passing yards. LaShawn McCoy with rushing. And then Dez put up almost 1,600 receiving. Here is something crazy though. We led the league in sacks, but Jason McCourty had 11 interceptions. That is crazy. I mean, what's the NFL record? 12? Let me double check that. Okay, so now I did overreact a little bit. I guess it's 14, which is crazy to think about. But still, man, 11 interceptions in a season. When's the last time that's happened? I don't know. Anyways, we're on to the playoffs. We get the Packers in the first round. They went 8-8. Eight and eight. In theory, I'm thinking this should be an easy win, but you never know with the Packers. So let's sim, let's hope for the best and see how we did. And we did it. We pull out the close and narrow victory, 23 to 20. There aren't many places in the playoffs that are harder to go in and win, but Lambeau Field, and we did it. How did we do it though? We outpaced them offensively. Rushing, we put up 157 yards. Passing, they just barely edged us, so. RG3 is just still unimpressive. Rodgers did not have his best game, still was okay. Alfred Morris is just still crushing it for us. He is becoming the true face of the franchise, honestly. I hate to say that because it's the RG3 rebuild, but what else am I going to say? Golden Tate puts up 100 yards, love that signing for us. Defensively, AJ Hawk had 13 tackles, he was all over the field. No sacks the whole game, and then interceptions, Antonio Cromartie got one, and Casey Hayward picked us off. So now we're on to the divisional round, and who else could it be but Colin Kaepernick and the San Francisco 49ers. They knocked us out in a close game last year. I think, yeah, they, I mean, they still did great, but I think they've fallen back down to earth just a smidge. I don't think they went quite 11 and 5 last year. I want to say they were 13 and 3 or 14 and 2, so they're beatable. We're both top 10 in each category, offensively and defensively. This should be another great matchup. Let's cross our fingers here and hope for the best. And we get revenge for last season. Our offense goes off, 38-28. We get the victory, the upset over the 49ers in San Francisco. Let's go. RG3, there he is. Passer rating of 133, four touchdowns, no picks. Colin Kaepernick has a rough day against our number one defense. No touchdowns, two picks rushing the ball. Frank Gore, the ageless wonder, 100 yards, two touchdowns. Alfred Morris is held in check for the most part, but it doesn't really matter because of the passing game. Receiving, who led the way as far as yards go? So Golden Tate, just showing out in the playoffs. 100 yards last week, 94 yards this week with two touchdowns. Vernon Davis and Anquan Bolden do well for them. Allen Robinson, the rookie, gets a touchdown for us. Travis Kelsey scores. And that is really what's to speak of as far as the receiving game goes. Then you go to the defense. Navarro Bowman, 13 tackles. He was all over the place. Corey Lemonier picked us off. Wait, did he? Excuse me, that was a sack. I was going to say, we didn't have any interceptions. Interceptions. Brian Arakpo and Brandon Merriweather had some. One each. So, yes, we are on to the conference championship. Let's see who we face. Okay, and this is our biggest challenge of the series so far. We get the one seed Eagles, divisional rivalry, number one defense against number one offense. They've got the number 11 defense, so I don't know. I like how we match up here. It should be close. Let's see if we can make it to our first Super Bowl with RG3. And it's the conference championship. You know we gotta hop in, at least for a little bit. We've done all this work to build the team. LaShawn McCoy, I will say, I did check it. He is actually the NFL's MVP. Not worth showing the rest, really, because it's not like we really picked up any major awards, at least as far as MVP goes. And look, we got a snow game. Let's go. This is going to be fun. I'm wondering if you can play the moments in this Madden. I don't know if it was introduced this Madden or the following. I'm hoping this one. Let's see if we can Super Sam. No, we cannot. Okay, no worries. This will actually give us a better idea of how the game is going. So Golden Tate strikes first with a 47-yard touchdown. 
they hit us back with a 58-yard rushing score from LaShawn McCoy. So, oh, and a fumble recovery by Fletcher Cox. Oh, no. They get the field goal. Let's see how the game's going. Okay, second quarter. And we get a 66-yard rush by Alfred Morris. So, two of the best running backs in the league just going back and forth. Next possession. Let's see. They have to punt. Our possession. We get a 61-yard rushing score by Ray Helu Jr. 21 to 10. Interception by Glover Quinn. We're rolling here. Okay, RG3 gets sacked and we got a punt. No worries. Two-minute warning. You know what? Let's hop in. We've done all this work. Why not have a little bit of fun with this team? And honestly, I like the look of the snow in this game better than recent Maddens. See if we can hit the running back on this route here. Now he's not going to be open, I don't think. That's okay. We'll rush it. Get some yards there. Hurry up offense. We'll go skin seams. Like that route. I'm thinking we can get Kelsey open, hopefully. Let's see. Yeah, I think he will be. There he is. Ah, oh, did not like how I pressed that. I lobbed it. I should have just thrown the bullet. He would have been wide open. That's okay, and I think that is Chip Kelly. I don't know. We're going to go half back off tackle here. We've got the best running back in the league. Second best, maybe. Let's use him. Oh, that's not even going to go to him. It's going to go to Lou, but it's okay. lou has been having a good day, so we'll let that continue. 12-yard gain. Actually, bigger than that, I think. I don't know, but here nor there, it's a first down. Quick slants. Everyone's favorite. Okay, we've got plenty of options here. You've got Pierre Garçon, Golden Tate, Allen Robinson on the field at the same time. Good luck. We hit him. Nine-yard gain, it looks like. We'll go hurry up again. Still have plenty of time. We'll go PA deep outs. Not going to play action, though. We'll just audible Morris into pass protection. I like that look, so Tate is going to go on a streak. See if we can hit him. He should have a step. No, not quite. Almost picked off against Boykin. Can't say I remember Boykin. Sorry, I don't pay much attention to the Eagles. Maybe it's Jarrett Boykin. I don't know. I'm just guessing. Probably not. And Morris is going to have a big gain. Let's see if he can get out of bounds. He can. And he's having a good game. He's already up over 100 yards in the first half. Who's the real MVP here? Okay. So 56 seconds left. I think we can hit the running back in the flat. We can. Hit the juke. Nope. Oh, yes, we can. Okay, big gain. 18 yards. No need to hurry. Who was that, Royal Lou? Yes. Our running backs are showing McCoy who's boss. We'll go mesh here. Thinking we can get Kelsey, maybe? Kelsey's not even in the game. I don't understand that. Okay, no worries. Allen Robinson exists. To get a one-yard gain, we'll call a timeout there. And he gets helped up. Look at the teamwork there. The culture is great. Bruce Allen, you were correct. Okay, Kelsey's back in the game. We're going to throw him on a slant here. He should be open. He is. Does he know to spike it yet? No, he does not. Guess that's just for Kansas City. Okay, 28-10 heading into half. I like to see that. All right, so after the score, let's pick up here. We'll go change possession. Shouldn't be anything going into half. So an 18-point lead. They get the ball first. They have to punt. We get the ball. And what happens? We get a field goal. So it's a 21-point lead. Oh, that doesn't make any sense. But here nor there, we've got the ball. We punt. They get the ball. And what happens? They go for it on fourth down and nothing. LaShawn well, McCoy cannot do it for them. We get stopped on fourth. No, excuse me, we punt. Sorry, I was looking at Deer and Sproles wrong. Okay, looks like they get a score, 31-17. It's a two-score game. We get the touchdown. Alfred Morris, 73 yards. This guy is insane. And Antonio Cromartie gets the pick. That's got to be game. 
That has got to be game. RG3 gets the touchdown pass to Golden Tate. It is officially blown wide open. Who cares at this point? We're going to send to the end of the game. It is over. They get the garbage time score. Doesn't matter. RG3, you are an NFC champion. You're headed to your first Super Bowl. Congratulations. Third year in the league. What a start. And just doing a quick look at the end of game stats here, RG3 has been saving his best for the playoffs, puts up just 143 yards, but three touchdowns, no picks. Nick Foles, don't worry buddy, your time's coming, you're going to have a couple rough years here with the Rams and whoever else you sign with, you might retire for a bit, but you'll win a Super Bowl, don't you worry. Alfred Morris puts up 154 yards on the ground, LaShawn McCoy 70, Roy Hallou gets 58. Receiving, I'm not sure why the stats are looking all goofy like this, but Aurelius Ben did pretty well, whoever that is. Golden Tate had two scores, and then defensively, Sacks, Barry Cofield had one, Trent Cole got us, Glover Quinn had a pick, and Antonio Cromarty. So the signings and the draft picks that we've made, they are paying dividends. We are headed to the Super Bowl. Okay, and it is RG3 versus Peyton Manning in the Super Bowl. Old versus new, polar opposites as far as QB styles go, but here you have it. They got their way to the Super Bowl. Number 16 offense, surprisingly. They did have a top 10 defense. On paper, we've got the edge, but we'll definitely see. Let's just take a quick look, though, and see how the Broncos got here and what their run looked like. Okay, so the Broncos have had a relatively easy playoff run. They got the bye, so against the Ravens in the divisional round, they take care of business 30 to 10 really not much to speak of there the Chiefs give them a little bit of trouble 26 18 it's an eight point victory so here we are they've made it through Joe Flacco they've made it through Alex Smith now can they beat RG3 let's jump in and find out okay here we go Super Bowl who is it gonna be Demarius Thomas may he rest in peace what a fun player he was to watch I mean, you had that game against the Steelers in overtime, one of the most iconic plays in NFL history, and then all of those crazy years with Manning. The guy was putting up like 1,500 yards every single year. Nothing but respect for Demarius Thomas, a true class act on and off the field. Glendale, Arizona, the site of many iconic Super Bowls. This one in real life being that Seahawks Patriots Super Bowl, where, you know, you had the Malcolm Butler play. Are we in store for a classic here today in Glendale? Let's find out as Peyton Manning takes the field with what ended up being a pretty mediocre offense. Here nor there, they're back, they're ready for revenge. Manning wants his first Super Bowl as a Bronco. We're not going to let him have it. You got John Fox as your head coach, not a chance, buddy. Sorry. Okay. Jim Nance and Phil Sims, nice seeing you, but let's just go ahead. I'm trying, I'm mashing the buttons here. I am trying to get on the field. What I will say is they really did go all out into the production of this, not even allowing me to skip the coin toss. They really want me to see who wins here. And as we know, the coin toss is the most important part of any game. Peyton Manning is clapping, he's happy. Terrence Knight in is ready to do some damage. And they didn't even really show who won the coin toss unless Manning clapping signified it was them. There's Wes Welker. He's ready to play. And I think we're finally ready to play. Okay, so at long last, after EA decided that we needed to see their cinematic masterpiece, we're ready to go. Broncos get the ball first. What are they going to do with it? Interception. So Peyton Manning in the Super Bowl... Uh, he's got a bit of a reputation, I'm not going to lie. Dequell Jackson gets the ball from him. So, Oh, and we give it right back the very next play. Jay Chaney, can't say I know who that is, but he picks us off. And Matt Prater strikes first with a 41-yard field goal. Can we hit them back? We do. Kai Forbath, 41 yards. 68-yard rush by Monty Ball. Who else remembers him being a bust in fantasy football? Not today. Okay, and Pierre Garçon drops a pass. Who's heard that one before? So we've got a punt, 10-3. to They score again on a 14-yard Demarius Thomas touchdown, 17-3. to We're going to hop in. we got to get something going here. Halfway through the second, just about, and no points on the board. 
Let's see if Peyton Manning's former teammate can do some damage here. He should get open. He does. Okay, and he gets rocked. So, not a big gain. Looks like Chris Harris took him down there. We're going to run the hurry up. Really no reason to. Just, I feel like it. Golden Tate, can you get open? Not really, but it doesn't matter. In traffic, he's still going to do it. Okay, first down here. Let's see who we can hit. Can we hit Pierre Garcon again? I'm wondering, not looking like it. Can we scramble though? No, because Escape Artist isn't a thing yet. But we still get him on the sideline. Big play. Let's go. 51 yards receiving already. He is ready to have a big game today, and that's just what he's going to do. We're going to go half back off tackle, see if we can get our running backs involved a little bit. It's been a bit of a slow day. Roy Halu, what have you got for us today? Nothing. That's why we don't run it. At least not with him. We're going to go halfback slam. Hopefully it gives it to Alfred Morris here. It should. It does. All right, second and 13. Let's get back on track here. Oh, and we get stuffed. But, oh, no, Alfred Morris does not care. He is still going to take it for a few yards. That's the effort we're looking for. It's third and nine. We got to do something here. What else but four verts? Kelsey's out there. We know how much trouble he's given the Broncos in recent years as a member of the Chiefs. Oh, bad throw, but we get away with that one there. Not intercepted by Jay Cheney that time. They want us to punt it. We're on the 36-yard line. They want us to punt it. Forget that. We're going to go four verts again, but we are going to change it to... T uh, I don't know. Tight end stick. Pierre Garçon. Forgive me. I suck at this game. Oh, and he gets tackled just short. All right, whatever. At least we didn't give them great field position, but that's that's on me. So hopping back into the sim here, just gonna say a prayer that I don't make it 24 to three, and they do. 72 yard rush by Monty Ball. So Monty Ball is about to be your Super Bowl MVP. Next time we hop in, won't be until the third quarter, and nothing. RG3 gets sacked twice in a row. They get it with 35 seconds left. We gotta keep them from scoring. I don't care. I know what I just said, but 24 to 3 heading into the half. We got a mount of comeback here. We're going to control care again. See what we can do. Four minute offense. And it's a screen. No, it's not. Doesn't matter. Incomplete. Okay, second and 10. What are they going to do? Manning, if you remember, likes to just sit an audible for five minutes in Madden, so hopefully he doesn't do that here because we don't have all day. Okay, and we force a bad pass, or more likely we knock it out, whatever, incomplete. Okay, third and ten. We're going to go cover three, and hope that's the right decision here. You never know against the Sheriff. Okay, and nothing. So they go three and out, good, we needed that. At this point, we're desperate, we're going to hop in for the punt return. Golden Tate has some juice, so let's see if he can use it. I mean, if we could even get a field goal here before half off of a good return, I would be not happy, but I would take it. And, okay, he's not going to do anything for us. So we're going to go into the half with this. A 21-point deficit. All right, so after that punt return, it is halftime. And we should get the ball first. We do nothing. Two incomplete passes to Allen Robinson. It's 27 to 3. We're going to play this out. We got to do something. Halfback counter. I know it's not the brightest decision to run it right now, but maybe catch him off guard. Okay. We're going to start running the hurry up cuz we're honestly running out of time. I know that sounds dramatic, but what else are you going to say when you're getting beat this badly in the Super Bowl? Okay, that was horrible. I suck at this game. All right, third and five. We are about in four down territory. I don't care. Golden Tate, can we get you deep? Yes, we can. RG3, please don't miss him. Yes, okay, big play. Big play right there. We needed that. We needed that bad. Do we start going for two? It is a 24-point game. Why the heck not? We got to do something here. 
We're gonna go half back dive. I don't know. Well, no, 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 no. I don't like that luck. Kelsey, we're gonna go for ya. And he's not open. Throw it to X, and he is open. Is that Golden Tate again? I believe so. All right, we needed that. Now let's hop onto the defense. Okay, 27-11 in the third. It is a 16-point game. We got this. Hopefully. We just got to get a couple stops here. A turnover would be massive if we can manage it. And we get the sack. That's big. Definitely needed that. Second and 16. Okay, second and 16. We're going cover three. As if it matters. Oh, and he hits Wes Welker for a big play. We got to get him down. Oh my gosh. What are we doing? Big play. First and 10. I know blitzing against Peyton Manning is just asking for trouble, but we're desperate. No, we're not. We're going to go cover two. Cover two, man. I cannot risk that. I thought about it. Okay. And they're about in field goal range, so I would really hate for that to happen. Is this the point where we blitz? We're going to go with the zone blitz here. And just pray we can get Manning down. I do not want them to get a field goal here. They're going to run it with Monty freaking Ball, who has torched us all day. 12 carries, 208 yards. This is pathetic. I mean, what are we doing here? We're going to blitz again. I'm mad. I'm actually angry about this. Out of all the running backs. Okay, we get Manning down. Ryan Kerrigan, thank you. They're out of field goal range for the time being, but they've still got two downs to work with here. And you know what? We're going to blitz again. I don't care. Manning might be a genius, but it's mad. We're going to go press too. I don't care how good your receivers are. We paid ours a lot of money. That's the most Dan Snyder thing I think I've ever said. <laughs> okay. So they're just about in field goal range. It's third and 12. We're going to risk it. I don't care, guys. We're going to blitz again. Say what you want about my skills and my knowledge of the game, but don't come crying to me when we sack him again. Take that, old man. Dequell Jackson. Can't do anything against him. So they're going to go for the field goal, actually, and they do have Matt Prater. I'd be surprised if they get this. This is a long one. Let's hope not. And no way. Wide left. Why would you even do that? All right, so we've got the ball again here. It's the Super Bowl. Let's have a little fun. We're going to read option. To be honest with you, I don't even know what buttons to press in this Madden or how similar this is, but we're going for it. We're going to pitch it. Yes, sir. Roy Hallou is going to get us some yardage, and we're going to go hurry up so we can hopefully try and get something going before the quarter ends. I don't like any of these plays, but we're going to go with this one here. Hope we can hit Kelsey on this route. I doubt it, but we're still going to try anyways because that's what we do. Oh, three guys right there, <laughs> and they drop it. We're just we're getting bailed out here by Denver secondary. It's a no-fly zone, but also it's a no-catch zone. That's the worst joke I've ever told, but it doesn't matter. No one's open, at least not that I can see. RG3 is going to scramble, and he gets the first down. Okay, next play. We are not going to have time before the quarter ends. So we head into the fourth quarter with a 16-point deficit, but we're marching right down there. Okay, now on this play, I really like Garcon. I'm hoping he can get open. He can. Oh, the safety's there. Did he catch that? No way. 31 yards for Pierre Garcon. I mean, this is very similar. I think Jermaine Curse had a play just like this in this very Super Bowl. Right before Russell Wilson threw that pick. I mean, that was insane. How do we not get a replay on that? And now I could go in and do it manually. I just don't care enough. But wow. What a play at that moment. Massive. Okay, and Morris, nothing doing. Four yard gain, whatever. We're going to go with some slants here because that's what you do when you're bad at mad and you run slants. And eh, I don't like that look. 
Can RG3 run it in? Yes, he can. Okay, so if we get the two point here, it is now an eight point game. Let's see. Let's see if we can go inside zone. Do I like this look? No, there's stuff in the box. I'm thinking we can hit Robinson here. Uh, not quite. I don't like that. We're going to throw it to X. No, not quite. Uh, so it's a 10 point game. All right, not the end of the world, but would have loved to have had that. Okay. We got to do something here. We're blitzing again. Forget it. It's a 10 point game. Clocks. Oh my gosh, I jumped off sides, you freaking idiot. Gosh dang it. Yeah, I suck at this game. But it's okay. We do what we can. The roster construction is the main part, but every once in a while, you gotta let the worst Madden player jump in and get some plays. And definitely have taken some liberties here, played way more than I probably should have, but I don't care. It's my video. I'm having fun. That's what we're doing. Third and three. Big, big play right here. Oh my gosh. Why did I pick that alignment or that formation? Ugh, I don't like this. Ah, oh, and he hits Welker. Dang it. Why would it suggest prevent defense to us? Why? All right, we'll go cover three. Now, scratch that, cover, cover two is what we want. Yeah, cover two. And fuck Monty Ball. Almost said a word I shouldn't say, but stopped myself. Monty Ball do that to ya. We're gonna blitz. At this point, we have to. It worked for us last time. Not this time, though. Who is that? Julius Thomas? I think. Yep, Julius Thomas. Time's winding here. They're running the clock out. I do not like this. We gotta get something, man. I don't think we're in burn the timeout territory yet, but we're getting close. They're gonna get down to the two minute warning. There they go. Okay, we got three timeouts, but it's a 10 point deficit. Something's gotta happen here. We're just gonna start blitzing because we know they're gonna run it. And Monty Ball, does he have the first down? Yeah, he does. You know what, guys? That's it. Game over. There, there's no stopping it. Change possession. Yeah, it, it's done. It's done. We gave our best. RG3 throws an interception. That is your Super Bowl. Monty Ball's got to be MVP. 30-17. to 17. We did our best. We made it to the Super Bowl. It was a great run. Still so early in RG3's career, but things definitely could have gone better. It's unfortunate, but we'll take it. And you look at the end of game stats here. I mean, he actually outpaced Manning by quite a bit as far as passing goes. Sure, he had the two interceptions, but you compare 300 yards to 129. Manning is not the reason this team won. It was this guy right here. Monty Ball destroyed us. 252 yards, 13.2 per carry, and two touchdowns. Sure, RG3 got one, but man, Pierre Garçon had a nice game for us. 175 yards, Golden Tate just dominating the playoffs. Just unfortunately was not enough. Defensively, who was doing what? Malik Jackson sacked us. Ryan Kerrigan got him. Jamar Chaney, that's who Jay Chaney is. Dequel Jackson and Stephen Bowen. So we were getting Manning. Tony Carter picked us off, so did Jamar Chaney, and Dequel Jackson picked off Manning, and that is your Super Bowl. Okay, so free agency's here, and we've got some decisions to make. Brian Arakpo is 29 years old. He's 95 overall. You know what? We're going to bring him back. I'm going to have to look and see what kind of deal he signed in real life. I believe he went to the Titans at this point, but... Whatever deal they gave him, Brian Arakpo is back. We want him. Next up is Ryan Kerrigan. I know we brought him back in real life. We're bringing him back here as well. He's a franchise cornerstone, 27. He's young enough. Ryan Kerrigan will be back. 
Brandon Flowers, we're going to let test the market, at least for a time being. We're not going to get him back right away. Same with Antonio Cromarty, he can test the open market, he's 31 years old. Sure, he played well for us this season, but I'm in no hurry to get him back right away. So we're going to enter the offseason with, we're sitting at 35 right now. We should be entering with around 25 or so. We'll see after these extensions, but we're going to have some money to spend for sure. And then everyone else on this list, I'm pretty much fine with letting go. Akeem Jordan, Roy Hallou, Jordan Jenkins, I think, Sharpton, Palumba. Sure, we'll need a new right tackle. Actually, no, we will not because Bakhtiari played there and he played well. Brandon Merriweather, he is our starting strong safety, but that's not saying much. Niles Paul is going to clear the way for Travis Kelsey to be our true number one tight end. Leonard Hankerson say goodbye. Kai Forbath, we'll see. Everyone else though, this is it. So heading into the 2015 offseason, before we transition over to Madden 16, here are the draft picks we'll have to work with. We finally have a first round pick to use, number 31 overall, and then in the second we'll be picking number 63 overall. So let's go ahead and move forward and see what we can do with those picks. Okay, so heading into 2016, there's definitely some holes to fill, but the good news is I believe we should have the money to do that even after bringing back Ryan Kerrigan and Brian Arakpo. Okay, so starting off with our in-house free agents, Ryan Kerrigan is a player that Washington brought back in real life. Five years, 57 million, and you know what? He's worth it, so he's back. Now, Brian Arakpo is a player that they let walk, and we are going to change the course of history. He is not going to Tennessee. He is staying with us for the same deal he signed with them, four years, 31 million. Now, say what you want about this, but I promise, look it up, this is the same deal he signed in real life. Richie Incognito is signing with us one year, one million dollars. I think we can all probably guess why the Bills got him for such a bargain in real life, but one, this is Madden, we don't care, and two, if you want to put this on the list of bad things that Washington has done as a franchise, I mean, this is not even in the top 50, so say what you want, but Richie Incognito's ours on a huge bargain. Another real life signing that I liked, Washington brought in Terrence Knight and Ole Potros himself on a one year $4 million deal, so yes sir, welcome to Washington. Now we don't have a whole lot of money left, but we do have enough to bring in some cheap old guys, so Corey Redding had a few really nice years for the Colts. He signed with the Cardinals two years, six million, I'm willing to pay him that for at least one year of, you know, 80 plus overall production, we're happy with that. Speaking of old guys, we needed a number three corner, and Tim Jennings is going to be that for us. We get him one year, $5 million. I'm fine with paying that. We'll take it. And now moving on to the draft. Of course, we're no longer picking fifth overall because we lost the Super Bowl, so Brandon Scherf is no longer an option. However, Landon Collins is, so we are taking him with the 31st pick in the draft. Now next up is round two, pick number 63. We actually went with Preston Smith here, who I completely forgot played for Washington. Solid player, I believe he's with the Packers now, forgive me if I'm wrong. But we're going to take Eric Kendricks, very nice middle linebacker. We've got Dequell Jackson, but we do run a 3-4, plus Jackson's getting up there in age. We know that he's not great by any means, so I'm definitely happy with this pick. Now one thing I am going to try is put Alfred Morris on the trade block, however, I don't think it's going to work. The reason I'm doing this is he's got one year left on his rookie deal, I know he's going to want to get paid, and rightfully so, I mean he's been truly the heart and soul of our offense, but you look at the offers here, I mean we're getting just third round picks, crap players, and fourth round picks, a couple teams are willing to go a second, which I mean is decent, but when you consider the fact that I'm only allowing myself to make these first two picks, I mean, I guess I could bend the rules for myself and let myself use any picks that I trade for, but still, I think I'd rather have Alfred Morris, especially considering the fact that we are definitely Super Bowl contenders at this point. Okay, so all that being said, regular season is here. Let's go ahead and sim to the playoffs and see how we did. 
Okay, so the playoffs are here. We do not have a game. And that is because we went 13-3. and We won the NFC East. We got a bye. Were we the one seed? That's the question. Yes, we were. Best record in the NFC, tying with, of course, the elite Seahawks at this point and the Panthers. You've got three 13-3 teams, but we came out on top. Those tiebreakers must have been tiebreaking. That's all I've got to say. Okay, so just going through the schedule here, we did start the season off with a loss to the Dolphins, who most likely still have Ryan Tannehill at this point, so they should be pretty bad. However, we didn't let that stop us. We rattle off one, two, three straight wins before we lose to the Falcons, who are great at this time. Matt Ryan and Julio in the peak of their prime. And then we go one, two, three, four, five, six straight wins. We get statement wins during this stretch. In October, most important stretch of the year, in my opinion. I mean, that October, November run is what really defines your team so we get a statement win over the Patriots 36 30 Brady and Gronk then we pretty much blow out almost the Panthers 35 18 who we know went 15 and 1 in real life this year and went 13 and 3 in sim we beat the Giants then we get a loss to the Cowboys then we get an additional four game winning stretch to end the year so we're coming into the playoffs red hot let's go and see who our first matchup is right after we check the stats Okay, so looking at the stats here, it's not looking like RG3 crushed it per se. We did have a top 10 offense and the number 4 defense in the NFL. Oh, okay, we'll take this from RG3. 3,400 yards, 27 touchdowns, 7 picks. I would say that's by far his best year with us so far. We'll take that any day of the week, especially when it's getting us to 13-3. and three. Yeah. Okay, and Alfred Morris just doing what he does best again. 1,600 yards, 17 touchdowns. He has just been great for us. It's honestly going to be hard not to want to extend him at this point. And then receiving Allen Robinson, second year player, putting up 1,200 yards with six touchdowns. Golden Tate is next with 700. Travis Kelsey puts up 404 touchdowns. Pierre Garçon getting up there in age, but still giving us eight touchdowns. We will take that. Then you go over to the defensive side of the ball. Dequell Jackson led the team in tackles, and then for sacks, we had no players hit double digits. Surprisingly, Brandon Graham gets 9.5 as a 3-4 defensive end. Arakpo and Kerrigan, bit of a down year for them after paydays. Don't love to see that. And then in the secondary, the rookie Landon Collins hauls in three interceptions. Sam Shields, our addition from last year, gets three. Eric Kendricks, the rookie, gets two. Two from Glover Clinton. Two from second-year player Bashad Breland. And then Dequell Jackson gets one for us. So our two rookies combined for five interceptions. And what's crazy is we didn't have a whole lot of sacks, but that defense was still just rock solid. I mean, fourth in the NFL, we'll take that all day. Okay, so on to the divisional round, and we get the Dallas Cowboys going 10-6, and six, making the playoffs as a wildcard team, finishing second in the division. Who will come out on top here? Let's go ahead and sim and find out. Okay, and that Super Bowl hangover is not stopping us. We are back in the conference championship game, taking on the Cardinals. Wow, so neither of those two 13-3 teams could get it done. I believe this is when they've got Carson Palmer. I think they actually made the conference championship in real life and got smacked by the Panthers. Let's find out. Just looking at the Cardinal stats from the divisional round, they destroyed the Seahawks. But yes, this was when they had Carson Palmer, David Johnson, Larry Fitzgerald should be in here somewhere. I guess he took the week off. One catch for three yards. Oh, and a touchdown, of course. But yeah, this was their year. They're here to make it all the way to the Panthers, unfortunately. Okay, so let's go ahead and check out the matchups here. I want to see how we did in the divisional round. So we played the Cowboys, and we smacked them, 42-17. Let's take a look at the stats here. RG3 puts up two touchdowns, no picks. Effic excuse me, efficient day for him. Romo puts up two touchdowns, two interceptions. Would love to do a rebuild with him. Comment if you'd like that, if you're still listening at this point. Alfred Morris putting up 100 yards. Guy's been crazy in the playoffs. Of course, he had the fumble. Silas Red, I guess, is someone we signed. Must have been one of those players to fill the roster. I've never heard of him before, but he scores two touchdowns. Unfortunately, our guys have butterfingers. 
receiving Alf not Alfred Morris, Allen Robinson is doing pretty well. Des Bryant scored. Travis Kelsey was next, so not a whole lot going on there. And then Sacks in the divisional round. Just a couple. Corey Redding had one for us, and then they got us down once. Interceptions to Quell Jackson and Sam Shields each hauled one in. Alright, conference championship, ladies and gentlemen. Who is it going to be? RG3? Is he going to make his second straight Super Bowl, or is it going to be Carson Palmer getting to the big game? Getting revenge for what happened in real life, that just smack down to the Panthers. What is going to happen? Let's find out. Okay, start of the game, and again, this is not a Madden that lets you play the moment. So we're going to get to see each possession. Let's see how it plays out. Looks like we're getting the ball first. And we march right down the field. 57-yard rushing score from Alfred Morris. All right. They've got the ball. They get a field goal. Chandler Cantanzaro. We get the ball back. We punt. They've got the ball. They punt. And not sure what happened there. That's one of those things when it changes quarters. I don't know. But they get a field goal. We get the ball again. And we score. Pierre Garçon, 11-yard touchdown from RG3. 14-6. They score. They get a touchdown from Michael Floyd. So 14-13. Can we get a score before the half? No. We're picked off by Patrick Peterson. They're in scoring range almost. And they do get a touchdown right before the half, unfortunately. Larry Fitzgerald, 10 yards. So 2014 heading into the half. What's going to happen? I believe they get the ball here to start the half. They do. It's 28-14. This feels like a good point to hop in after a John Brown touchdown and a John Brown two-point conversion. Let's get in there. All right, we're going to run the ball here. That's what's gotten us to this point. That's what's going to get us back in this game. I like the look of that defense. Not that I know anything about reading defenses, but big gain from Alfred Morris. Nearly 15 yards on that. All right, we'll take that. That is what we needed. We're going to get momentum back here. We haven't had it for a minute. We're going to run a screen pass. Alfred Morris is not known for his pass catching, but we're going to use that to our advantage here. We're going to catch him off guard. And he is going to be wide open. He's got a team of blockers. Okay. Breaks the tackle. Breaks another. He's still in bounds. Big gain for Alfred Morris. Okay. We needed that. We are knocking on the door here, getting ourselves right back into this game. Do we run the ball again? Yes, we do. We're going inside zone here. It's worked for us so far. Let's just keep doing it. Okay. And... No gain. All right, so second down here, second and 10, and we're going to go stick. I'm thinking we can get Tate open. I see the safety coming down. Hopefully, if I'm not, uh, I did misread that. He was not coming down. Doesn't matter. Golden Tate in traffic. What are you going to do? We're going to run the hurry up here. We're going to go a little read option. Why not? I'm thinking RG3 is going to get smacked here, but I'm willing. Oh, yeah. Nope. That was the complete wrong read. Okay, so we get stuffed for a loss. Lovely. All right, second and long. We're going to run it. No, we're not going to run it. I don't like the way that box looks. I don't really necessarily love that either. We're going to audible Robinson on a fade and see if we can hit him. Can we? Yes, we do. Allen Robinson, 18-yard gain just short of the end zone. Very nice work. Okay, so we've got first and goal. We're going to run a toss here. See if we can get Morris to the outside. Can we? I believe we can. Yes, sir. He is in. Now it's going to be 28-21, pending the extra point. Okay, 28-21. Cardinals have the ball. Can our defense get a stop? Let's find out. Yes, interception by Sam Shields. Let's go. We are almost in the red zone already, and we make it a tie game with a 10-yard rushing score from Alfred Morris, his third of the game. Tie game heading into the fourth. Instant classic on our hands here. So they have to punt. We've got the ball. And we march right down there. Pierre Garçon has his second score of the game from RG3. It's a four-yard touchdown. We have the lead. And they punt. So we've got the ball again heading into the two-minute warning. Can we run out the clock here? Let's find out. 
and we get a field goal. 10 point lead, 43 seconds left. They've got no timeouts. I'm thinking it's over. I'm thinking it's over. It is. We are headed to our second straight Super Bowl. Bruce Arians cannot believe it. And neither can we. Super Bowl hangover who? RG3, welcome back to the big game. Now let's go ahead and find out who we're facing. And just wanted to take a quick peek at the end of game stats here. Carson Palmer played his heart out. I believe this may have ended up being his last game as a Cardinal. If not this, he might have had one more year, but I know this was the peak for them. He puts up almost 300 yards, three touchdowns, and that pick that really changed the tide of the game. RG3 was good, not great, but we'll take it. Running the ball, Alfred Morris puts up 10 per carry, 143 yards, three touchdowns. This guy is becoming a franchise legend. It is becoming harder and harder to want to let this guy go in free agency. I'm getting attached to him. I mean, he's just, he's great. And then receiving, John Brown had a big game against us. And then aside from that, not a whole lot to speak of. Although Pierre Garçon did have his two touchdowns, he made the most of them on three catches. Defensively, who was doing what out here? Not a whole lot. Brandon Graham got a sack and then... They got one on us. Sam Shields got a pick, so did Patrick Peterson, and that is your ball game. Okay, Super Bowl 50, and we get the Buffalo Bills. Who is their quarterback right now? How are they out here going 12 and 4? Let's look at the conference championship game for them and see how this happened. I want to take a look at their whole playoff run, actually. Okay, so no wild card game. They got a bye, and they beat the same Dolphins that beat us week one, 31-28. Now let's find out who that mystery quarterback is. Is it Tyrod Taylor? It is. Man, I love Tyrod Taylor, or Tyrod Taylor, excuse me. I always get that messed up, Tyrod Taylor. I mean, great player, great guy on and off the field. He deserves a Super Bowl, but we want one for RG3, so this is going to be a lot of fun. How did the conference championship game go for them? They blew out the Chiefs, 34-13, not even close. They've got Alex Smith at the time. Terod Taylor just balled out, man. Two touchdowns, no picks, 315 yards through the air. This is going to be a fun one. And since it's the Super Bowl, why not get to know them just a little bit? Let's take a look and go back in time, see who the Bills were rocking with at this time. So Marcel Darius is still 25 years old. He's a 96 overall DT, stud. LaShawn McCoy was a beast for the Bills. He was so much fun to watch with them. Loved him with the Eagles, but man, he had a really fun couple years with the Bills. Then you've got the punter, Colton Schmidt, but punters do matter, so... Way to go, Colton. Charles Clay was still crushing it for him. Sammy Watkins at this time was still very highly regarded. 22 years old, 90 overall. Cordy Glenn is in here. Dan Carpenter is the kicker. Mario Williams, defensive end. A very young Stefan Gilmore, just 24 years old. And of course, you've got Tarab right there, 87. Jerry Hughes. Corey Graham, Kyle Williams, Eric Wood the center, Percy Harvin is here, Ronald Darby's a rookie at this time. They've got a fun team. Carlos Williams, the rookie running back. And I'm just trying, oh look, and you've got Robert Woods here. I completely forgot that he was with them. That's who drafted him. Chris Hogan, I believe this was before he went to the Patriots or shortly after, can't quite remember. There's EJ Manuel, the, um, the big boss from 2013. Not really a whole lot else to speak of here. Oh, they did get Leonard Hankerson from us, former player that we had. So this is gonna be a lot of fun. Okay, start of the game. Super Bowl 50, RG3, Tarod Taylor. Super Bowl is on the line. Let's get into it. First possession. They're gonna get the ball first. What are they gonna do with it? They fumble. Glover Quinn scoops it up. Not sure who fumbled, but we'll take it. Turnover to start the game. And we capitalize, turning it into a seven yard Golden Tate touchdown pass from RG3. We are on the board, and they are on the board with a Charles Clay four yard touchdown pass from Terod Taylor. We get back on the board with a 71-yard rushing score. Alfred Morris, franchise legend at this point. What can they do? They score again. We're going back to back here. Sammy Watkins is on the board. What can we do? Another touchdown. Red gets in. 
RG3 now has two, two passing scores. Can they score before the half? They cannot. They threw an interception. Bashad Breeland hauls it in. We are in field goal range. Can we get more? We can. We get a touchdown before the half. RG3, three first half touchdown passes, and we are rolling in the Super Bowl. Okay. We get the ball to start, and another score. Alfred Morris, a 53-yard catch from RG3. Four touchdown passes for RG3. And they punt. We get the ball. What can we do with it? We score again. Allen Robinson is now in the party. Oh, we are just crushing it here. Field goals aren't going to do it, unfortunately. This is looking like a game. We punt for the first time all day with 4.33 left in the fourth. What can they do with it? Nothing but an interception by Brian Arakpo. Quiet regular season doesn't matter. Golden Tate is back in the end zone. This is what? Five, six passing touchdowns for RG3. Insane Super Bowl performance. Punt. This is going to be the game. And that is it. RG3, you are a world champion. I don't know how many players, how many teams have come from a Super Bowl loss to turn around and win it the next year. I can't think of any off the top of my head, but we have done it. And we get that classic Super Bowl celebration. But your Super Bowl MVP, I don't even have to go searching for it. Per perfect passer rating, 158.3. 242 yards with six touchdowns, no interceptions. Terod Taylor, unfortunately, just does not have the game he wanted to have. Rushing the ball. You had LaShawn McCoy with 128 yards. Alfred Morris with just another great game, 154 yards and a score. Receiving. Who was doing it for us? It was hard to keep track as the game was going on. No 100-yard receivers. RG3 was just spreading that ball around. Golden Tate got in twice, but other than that, not a whole lot to speak of. Sacks, pretty quiet game, but Ryan Kerrigan got in there. And then, of course, Brian Arakpo and Bashad Breeland had those two interceptions. So that is your Super Bowl, 49-17. RG3 at this point in his career was getting benched for Kirk Cousins. Nope, not here. Super Bowl MVP, Robert Griffin III. Okay, the offseason is here. We've got a healthy $39.9 million in cap space. Who are our free agents? Alfred Morris, of course. And at this point, as long as he's going to be mildly reasonable, we got to bring him back. I know he's 27. I know that's kind of that age for running backs or close to it. But we have to. I'm going to see what he wants. Terrence Knighton. Uh, I, I think I'm okay on Terrence Knighton. I'm going to at least let him hit the market. Daryl Young, same thing. Tress Way, he's a punter, unfortunately. Richie Incognito is intriguing. Kirk Cousins is a no, and he shouldn't be an 82 overall because he hasn't played a snap for us. Dustin Hopkins, eh. Logan Paulson's a no. Foster's a no. And then really no one else here is worth speaking of, to be completely honest with you. But let's see what Morris wants. Let's see if we can get him back. Okay, so he wants $90 million over six years. Unfortunately, that is going to be a massive no for me. Um, Alfred Morris, I really hate to do this, buddy, but you are getting franchise tagged. So you're around for at least another year. You're getting paid $9.8 million. I don't love to do that. I know that's kind of a bad move especially for running backs you get just brutally punished as far as you know carries go and taking hits and all of that but whatever it's Madden he's around for another year now Terrence Knighton on the other hand he just wants 10.1 million over two years we're gonna go ahead and do that I am more than fine with that Terrence Knighton is back for another two seasons with us Okay, so heading into the offseason, we've got around 40 million in cap space. Let's take a look and see what our roster is looking like. We're going to have to sim here to lose the guys we're not bringing back, but let's just take a quick look and see what we're working with. Okay, so offensively, pretty much all of the pieces are still here. So really no major losses to speak of. I still like what we have on the offensive line. Of course, we did lose Incognito. He wanted around $15 million for two years, which honestly for a guard, eh, I wasn't feeling that. So we're probably going to want to get another guard. But aside from that, I'm pretty happy with what we have here. Of course, we will need some tight end depth. That is for certain. We can't just have one, no matter how good Travis Kelsey is. And then on the defensive side of the ball... 
again, I still like what we have. I mean, depth for sure. We're going to need some more cornerbacks. It looks like we only have three on the roster. That's not going to work. But aside from that, I really like what we have here. Everyone has progressed fairly well. And I think the next Madden is where they actually give you a little bit more flexibility to edit the player's ratings. So we're going to try and keep these guys as close to where they are right now, just for the sake of keeping this as realistic as possible. However, I don't know how long the video is at this point. If you're still watching, thank you. But we are going to cut it off here. So in part two, we're going to go for the next three years. So we did 2013, 2014, 2015. So in the next series, we're going to go 2016, 17, and 18. RG3 is now a Super Bowl champion and Super Bowl MVP. He is having the career that many hoped and expected he would when he came out number two overall. And let's just, as one last thing here, take a look at our draft picks. What are the first two picks we're going to make here? We'll go manual trade to find out because that's the best way to do it, unfortunately. Okay, so we're picking, oh, this was easy. I could have guessed this. 31st overall and 64th overall. So we're going to find out who we take, who we pick up in free agency in the next video. And actually, we've got around 30 million in cap space to work with. So definitely going to be able to bring in some guys if we choose to do so. It's going to be about time to pay RG3. So we'll have to keep that in mind. But thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you in the next video. And I will, yeah, talk to you later.